So Vanguard's been out for a little bit now, but you might still be making some mistakes that could be hurting your gameplay performance, whether that be something actually in-game to something you can control, say, on the settings side. Today we're going to be breaking down some mistakes that you may be making and how to correct them with relative ease. So that said, as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Is there any mistake that you think you're making or that you've seen others make that you'd like to add to this list? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to stay today with all things Vanguard, whether it be updates and information, tips and tricks, best class setups, camo guides, whatever the case, we got you covered here on the channel. So if you're interested in any of that, you're part of that nearly 70% of viewers that are not subscribed and you'd like to help us out on that road to half a million, I'd love to have you in the community. That said, let's jump right into it. First thing we talk about things that are mistakes that you're making is one that honestly I make a ton as well. It's one that subconsciously is a hard habit to break simply because especially with tax print, you want to get from point A to point B as fast as possible. But the big mistake that you might be making is sprinting into gunfights. A lot of the times there are various areas around various numbers of maps that are high traffic areas. There's going to be a gunfight there, but you want to either try and breeze through it or get into the action as fast as possible. But instead of just having your weapon up, you sprint into what is then a necessary gunfight. That's something that when you're going into those certain situations, take a second, try to think, is there going to be a player here? Could there be a player here? And if there could be, make sure you have that gun up, sort of strafe around a little bit, maybe get ready for that gunfight so that maybe you can catch an enemy off guard as opposed to them catching you off guard. Another mistake you may be making kind of follows similar in the way of getting ready for a gunfight, but that coming down to crosshair centering. Now, crosshair centering is something that may seem natural to look a little bit more at the ground, at somebody's knees, whatever the case may be, when you're looking at the map at large. But you should always be anticipating where gunfights could be coming from, and as a result, having that crosshair up a little bit higher than may feel natural. Now, if you're somebody that has always played with your crosshair up, it may seem out of the ordinary to have your viewpoint looking anywhere other than than at chest height, but always keep an eye on that white dot in the center of your crosshairs. Have that at chest height always. Pre-aim areas with it. Try and lead your viewpoint with that as well. Don't run into an area and then shift. Try and shift your viewpoint with it as you move so that you're always ready for a gun up engagement where you can be more accurate and more precise as fast as possible instead of say maybe starting a gunfight and then having to adjust your aim accordingly because in that time, especially with Vanguard's TTK, you could be dead. Additionally, when it comes down to crosshairs and settings like that, make sure that in Vanguard settings, you have crosshair bobbing off and camera movement on the lowest setting. This way, it doesn't affect anything in your movement and the ability to keep track of that crosshair and that centering position. When it comes to in-game, the next thing you should absolutely be doing if you're not already is to peek or jump corners. Basically, if you have an opportunity to round a corner, get positioning on somebody, do it with some sort of movement, some sort of faster paced progression throughout the map. Holding an angle is something that will get you killed, obviously, but slow peeking, that's something that can also be damaging to your gameplay experience because you're not breaking any cameras. You're not getting that peeker's advantage as it's also known. If you jump around a corner, if you strafe peek, it will then break that camera angle for your enemy, allowing you to get that information before they ever even really see you. It's a very minimal difference in terms of gameplay input, but it is something that does give you a competitive advantage. So if you're not already doing it, make sure that you are. Next mistake you may be making here is unfortunately one that seems to be the way of the road as of Call of Duty in the last couple of years overall. Just the way the matchmaking system works, but make sure that if you can, you're running in a party. Whether that be one, two, three, four, or five other friends, make sure that you're running with at least somebody. Solo play has, in the last couple of years, become a bigger chore than in games before Modern Warfare 2019, but it is something that, especially with Vanguard, that fast-paced TTK, the ability for maps to flip spawns on a dime and anything else that may be going along with that, having an extra set of eyes or maybe multiple, and the ability to communicate any changes in game in real time, that of course is something that is a huge help in doing better. Additionally, that means that you can also utilize two of the next tips we'll talk about here, in which number one, in game, stack your UAVs. If you are running in a party, make sure you coordinate with your squad so that everybody's running a UAV if at all possible. Because if you end up stacking three UAVs, calling them in all at one time, where whether it's for five seconds or the entire duration of the UAVs, whenever they are called on top of each other, three UAVs end up giving a partial advanced UAV effect, or rather, I guess, recon planes, we should call them as they're officially referred to. But this allows you to see in real time where everybody is on the map, on the enemy team, minus players that are ghosted. Those are still protected. Those are only revealed with local informants, the 12 kill streak. But outside of that, for three recon planes, you will be able to get the real time directional carrot icons showing exactly where players 
players are, where they're going, and where they're even looking directionally. So it is a huge asset to help. And honestly, four kills in a lot of different maps here across three different players, very, very easy to achieve. So make sure that you're coordinating that with your teammates and again, running in a party. And also kind of running in a party relating to that is make sure that you utilize a clan bonus. This is something that just for simply playing with your friends, if they are a part of your clan within Vanguard, you get a handful of bonuses in game, i.e. 10% bonuses to your clan level, your weapon XP level, your overall XP level, and your operator level. So it is something that gives you the sort of quad effect right off the rip for just simply playing with your friends that you may otherwise already be playing with. So if you're not already in a clan, make sure you make one and then get those bonuses and yield a better result. Now, outside of that, talking in-game things, one thing that absolutely should be a staple, but maybe something you overlook is make sure that you're using the square minimap and not the circular one. Now, this might seem like a no-brainer, especially if you have played Modern Warfare 2019, you have played Warzone, but with the square minimap, you actually gain about 15 to 20% of visible area on the peripherals of that minimap. That can be huge if you're going in and trying to get as much information as possible. That could alert you to where players are spawning. That could be alerting you to somebody on a flank. Whatever the case, it helps out tremendously. Additionally, on top of that, make sure that if you have not already, a mistake that I see commonly is players not enabling the minimap rotation. This makes sure that what you see in front of you is always displayed as above you on the minimap, and you're always sort of following that compass of north, east, south, and west. On your minimap, it's always going to be in relation to north in front of you, east to the right, south behind you, and west to your left. So it helps out greatly with that map awareness. Following suit with some settings, some mistakes you may be making may come down to even just some of how your game actually looks. We've taken a look at the entire settings of Vanguard here beforehand, but make sure that for clarity's sake, you're disabling motion blur for both the world and your weapon as well, disabling depth of field so that you have a clearer picture of the world around you while ADS'd, and also consider turning on Fidelity FX Cast. This is something that will increase the sharpness of your scene rendering and is something that can make the game look a lot clearer just by simply toggling this on. Now, for PC, this is something that may conflict with some other settings that you have in terms of DLSS, but for those on console, you honestly do not lose out on basically anything here with this. You might lose like a frame or two in terms of performance whenever you're considering, say, 120 hertz, but overall, you're not really going to notice much of a difference, but the picture will look that much sharper. The second to last mistake you may be making here is for camo grinders in particular. We've talked about it in passing here before, but make sure that you end up doing your launchers and melees earlier on here in the year as opposed to later. The thing that I this year decided to do and it's been a tremendous help in my camo grind is taking launchers on every single class and passively working on these camo challenges as I ranked up every other weapon. I end up running engineer on a lot of classes so I'll see a field upgrade or a streak or something like that that I can easily take out while also not really sacrificing anything from my gameplay and weapon leveling. I'm just simply going and playing the game but if I see something I'll be like ah I got something on my back for that and take it out and progress my camo challenges. That is something that is way more beneficial than waiting and saving these until later on when they're incredibly tedious and so therefore could elongate your gold, diamond, or atomic camo grind by quite a bit if you save them until the very end. So make sure you get those out of the way while you're ranking up other things and doing it simultaneously. And the final thing we'll talk about is one that is still a little bit problematic, but I see it probably the most out of any other mistake here is don't just use one or two weapons within Vanguard. It is something that whether or not you end up caring about Warzone, rank up everything for the Warzone integration coming, but also just for Vanguard, there are probably a dozen awesome create a class loadouts that you can end up making that match, if not outclass, things like your STG-44, your MP-40, and things like that that may have been ranked up initially, but you don't really want to take the time to rank anything else up. While sure you have a good weapon, after a little bit of future tuning here, you're gonna be kind of left in the dust if you don't have anything else ranked up. So get a jump on that, try out all these other weapons you have on offer and see just how many more powerful classes there actually are. But that said, that's the mistakes you may be making here within Vanguard and how to correct them very easily and have a much better gameplay experience as a result. So that said, that's gonna wrap it up. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Is there any mistakes you think that you're making that you could throw on this list? Anything that I may have missed, feel free to let me know down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video and of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Vanguard. And of course, if you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best place to chat with me outside of YouTube. So if you guys would like to check those out, those links are down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.